All right, we're at uh, section 19.9, magnetic fields of current loops and solenoids. On Thursday's lab, we will be using solenoids. So uh, pay attention to this, uh, uh, to this section. Okay, next slide. Um, let's think about how to increase the strength of a magnetic field due to a current carrying wire. One way is to form the wire into a loop. Let's see how this works. Consider the effect of, a sm of several small segments of the current loop as shown in the figure on the left. The small segment at the bottom of the loop labeled delta xi produces a magnetic field of magnitude B1 at the loop center directed upward. You can verify the direction of B using the right hand rule. Remember the, the thumb, your thumb is the uh, current and the, your fingers roll around in the, uh, to pr produce the magnetic field. Uh, imagine holding the wire with your right hand with your thumb pointing in the direction of the current. Your fingers then curl around in the direction of B. Notice that a segment of length delta x2 at the top of the loop also contributes to the field at the center, which increases its strength. The field produced at the center by the segment delta x2 is the same magnitude as B1 and is also directed upward. In the same way, all other segments like these contribute to the field. The next effect is a magnetic field for the current loop as shown in the middle figure. Notice that the magnetic field lines enter at the bottom of the current loop and exit at the top. Compare this figure with the figure of a, on the far right, which shows the field of a bar magnet. The two fields are similar. One side of the loop acts as though it were the north pole of a magnet, and the other acts as a south pole. Okay, let's... Uh... The magnitude of the magnetic field at the center of a cir circular loop carrying current I is given by the equation shown. Uh, B equals mu zero times the current divided by two times the radius. Um, this equation must be derived with calculus, but we can still show that it is reasonable by calculating the field at the center of four long wires as shown in the figure each carrying current I and forming a square with a, ra a circle of radius R inscribed within it. Intuitively, this arrangement should give a magnetic field at the center that is similar in mag magnitude to the field produced by the circular loop. The current in the circular wire is, clo is closer to the center so that, wire, so that wire would have a magnetic field somewhat stronger than just the four legs of the rectangle, but the strengths of the straight wires beyond the rectangle compensate for it. Each wire contributes the same magnetic field at the exact center, so the total field is given by the equations here. All right, a lot of equations. Four times B equals four times mu zero I uh, divided by two pi R. And um, if we take out we we take out the pi uh, four pi. Uh, 4 divided by pi times mu zero i over 2 r, which comes out to be uh, 1.27. Um, okay, notice that this result is approximately the same as the field produced by the circular loop of, uh, of current. When the coil has n loops, each carrying current i, the, mag the magnetic field at the center is given by the last equation. B equals n mu zero i two r uh, okay now we're going to introduce a solenoid now let's Im imagine a long straight wire bent into a coil of several closely closely spaced loops the resulting device is called a solenoid often called an electromagnet this device is important in many applications because it acts as a magnet only when it carries a current the magnetic field inside a solenoid increases with the current and is proportional to the number of coils per unit length. The figure shows the magnetic field lines of a loosely wound solenoid of length L and total number of turns N. Notice that the field lines inside the solenoid are nearly parallel, uniformly spaced and close together. 
As a resu result, the field inside the solenoid is strong and approximately uniform. The exterior field at the sides of the solenoid is non-uniform, much weaker than the interior field and opposite in direction to the field inside the solenoid. Sorry, I couldn't find that <laughs> I thought I said, hey Siri. Um, I did say Siri that time. <laughs> All right. Uh, this distraction is uh, interrupting my my uh, speech. Okay. The number of if the turns are closely spaced. The field lines are as shown in the figure on the left, entering at one end of the solenoid and emerging at the other. One end of the solenoid acts as a north pole, and the other end acts as a south pole. Compare this solenoid to the figure on the right of a bar magnet. If the length of the solenoid is much greater than its radius, the lines that leave the north end of the solenoid spread out over a wide region before returning to enter the south end. The more widely separated the field lines are, the weaker the field. At the same time, the field inside the solenoid is much stronger. Here the lines are close together. Also, the field inside the solenoid has a constant magnitude at all points far from its end. So we can apply Ampere's law to the solenoid, which results in the equation here. Uh, B equals mu zero N times I. Um, this is for the field inside the solenoid, where N is the number of turns per unit length of the solenoid. Okay, uh, take a look at the figure which shows an old style cathode ray TV set. This type of TV uses steering magnets that rapidly and accurately direct an electron beam across a screen of phosphors in the scanning motion, uh, creating an illusion of a moving picture out of a series of bright dots. Okay, electron microscopes use a similar gun in both electrostatic and electromagnetic lenses to focus the beam. And here we have particle, ex uh, an ex particle accelerator. Uh, particle accelerators require very large electromagnets to turn particles moving at nearly the speed of light. Tokamaks are experimental devices used in fusion power research, and they use magnetic fields to contain hot plasmas. If you look off to the, uh, the left side, you see a person inside this tokamak. So these are, these are large uh, containment units. See, what you see here is you see these, these um, circles going around. The, these circles are magnetic ring, rings that contain uh, a plasma. We won't get into that, but but uh, uh, there used to be one at University of Texas where where uh, where I used to where I got my master's degree. Um, okay, let's continue. Um, are we still yes. Okay. Um, Let's just use Ampere's law to obtain the expression for the magnetic field inside a solenoid carrying a current I. A cross section taken along the length of part, the length of part of our solenoid is shown in the in figure. B inside the solenoid is uniform and parallel to the axis, and B outside is approximately zero. Consider a rectangular path of length L and width W as shown in the figure. We can apply Ampere's law to this path by evaluating the sum B parallel times delta L over each side of the rectangle. The contribution along side three is clearly zero because B equals zero in the, this region. The contributions from sides two and four are, are both zero because B is perpendicular to delta L along these paths. Side one of length L gives a contribution of BL to the sum because B is uniform along this path and parallel to delta L. So the sum over the closed rectangular path is the, has the value shown in the equation. Oh, whoa, too many uh, hits. Okay. Um,
Okay. Uh, yeah, we can just rewrite that as this B equals mu zero N over L I or mu zero N I where N is the number of turns per unit for, for length. Um, okay, this ends the section on magnetic fields or, uh, of current loops and solenoids. The next section is 1910 magnetic domains. And I think it'll be the last section also.